Hello everyone and welcome back to another Disney Princess Dress Analysis. Today we are going to be looking at the first Disney Princess, Snow White. If you would like to watch all the other Disney Princess Dress Analyses that I have done, there will be a playlist on my channel complete with all of the d dresses that I have looked at so far, so feel free to check it out after you watch this video. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. The film Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was released in 1938 during the Great Depression. The film was immensely popular and made around $8 million at the time, which was pretty good. This film was set in Germany and we know this by just looking at the architecture of both the Queen's Castle and the Dwarves Cottage, which both carry some distinctly German architecture choices and techniques. The film is also based off of a fairy tale by the brothers Grimm, and they were German. So now let's get into her dress. I think that Snow White's dress is rather unique when it comes to the Disney princesses. I cannot think of any other cartoon character who has this color scheme of red, yellow, and blue, and her overall silhouette is really different from the other princesses in the lineup. This dress is a lot less structured than the other dresses that I've looked at, and the skirt is a lot more loose and flowy compared to the more rigid bodice that she is wearing with it. Style of this dress's bodice is similar to the ones of the 1560s. The bodices of period dresses would come to a point at the waist and then the skirt would spread out from there. And the skirt would be closely pleated to make the shape almost resemble a bell and then be parted in the center to reveal a smooth, plain underskirt. The exposed underskirt was rather popular in England, but it wasn't so much so in the rest of Europe. Seeing as we know Snow White's story takes place in Germany, she would not have her skirt parted in the center to reveal an underskirt. This checks out when we look at the dress that she actually was given in the film. The sleeves have this sort of slashing detail on them that is both really beautiful and really interesting to look at. The slashing goes all the way down the sleeves and then the sleeves would feature ruffs at the end which were a common theme throughout the rest of the dress and are featured in other places. There are plenty of other details worth mentioning about these dresses since they really are quite intricate and detailed. The first thing that I'm going to mention are the collars. The neckline of the dresses would continue all the way up the neck and end with a ruff at the top. As we can see by looking at some of these portraits from the time, the fabric around the neck area was heavily beaded and detailed or embroidered. Many of the dresses in the paintings I look at depicted women wearing extremely large golden chain necklaces. These dresses are very extravagant and would be heavily beaded, embroidered, and decorated. Now this was a brief overview of the fashion of the 1560s just in general all over Europe but now I'm going to just focus down a little bit more on Germany which would give us a good idea of what Snow White should be wearing. The dresses of the Germans shared many characteristics with the dresses of the Spanish. Both countries chose to make most of their clothing in a black color scheme and black dresses were the most popular. I'm not trying to say that they didn't use any color, but black was extremely popular. As I mentioned, black is extremely popular and in order to make it less dark, they would embroider it with gold, adding a bit of shine and a bit of light to the gowns. Many of the dresses were made out of fabrics with contrasting textures, like a cotton and then a velvet, which would add another whole layer of visual interest onto these already stunning gowns. So is Snow White dressed historically accurate for the time period in which her film is meant to take place? The original fairy tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was published in 1812, and I looked to see if there were any references to early 1800s fashion in her dress, and there isn't really. Remember, early 1800s fashion is Regency era. Think empire waistlines, long tube like skirts, dresses didn't really have much shape. Snow White's, however, despite the skirt being not as full, 
it still does have a definite shape to it. So she doesn't fit in with the fashion of this time. So her film was released in the 1930s. So I looked to see if there were any 1930s references in her fashion and yes, yes there are. When looking at the fashion of the 30s, I can definitely draw a parallel between the fashion of the time and Snow White. The overall silhouette is very similar to not popular 1930s fashion and we can even see Snow White's popular puffed sleeve sh becoming more and more popular during the 30s. Also Snow White's hairstyle you could basically put on any Hollywood actress of the 30s. So her dress really does fit in with the fashion of the 1930s, almost more so than it does with the fashion of the 1560s. So Snow White's dress does fit in with the, the fashion of the 1930s, but it's not supposed to. It's supposed to fit in with the fashion of the 1560s. Snow White's dress should have long sleeves and the slashing details should continue all the way down them with them ending in ruffs. The collar of the dress should also come higher and end with another ruff. The fabric of the dress, especially at the collar and on the bodice, should be heavily beaded, embroidered, and decorated with jewels, and she should be wearing a long golden chain necklace. There aren't that many problems that I see with the skirt of the dress. It just should probably have a bit more volume to it, but the silhouette is kind of accurate for the time, so I think I'll give that one to Disney. If you would like to see an extremely historically accurate recreation of what Snow White should actually be wearing, I would recommend checking out Carolina Zabrowska's video on her making this amazing dress. Honestly, me and my sewing machine could never. And that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah. I will see you next time.